to receive a kingdom of isolation and it looks like I'm the queen the wind is howling like this swirling storm and good day boys and girls I am so happy that you're here are you ready for some reading comprehension fun? Our topic for today is, drum roll please, dun, 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 personification. Yes. Today, we will be learning about this amazing figure of speech with the help of the characters from Frozen. I hope you're ready, boys and girls, because I'm so excited to get into this lesson with you today. Before we go any further, here are your lesson objectives. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to determine the meaning of the word personification and discuss examples of personification in various texts. Hi, Olaf. I always like to start my lessons with a bit of an icebreaker. Today, let's identify some literary elements from the movies Frozen 1 and Frozen 2. Literary elements are character, setting, conflict, and solution. The characters are the people or the animals in the stories. The setting is when and where the story takes place. The conflict is the problem and the issues that the characters face. And the solution is the conflict has been resolved. Can you identify any of the characters from Frozen 1 and Frozen 2? Good job. If you said characters like Ola, Anna, Elsa, Hans, you are correct. Those are the people or animals in the stories. What about the settings? Awesome job. If you said places like Arendelle or Mythical Forest, you are correct. Or if you said during winter time or at daytime, those are settings as well. How about the conflict? Remember, the conflict is the problem. Good job. The conflict in Frozen 1. Anna was trying to help her sister find herself. And Arendelle was being taken over by the evil Prince Hans. And the conflict in Frozen 2 is the sisters were trying to find some answers about their people. The solution? What were the solutions in Frozen 1 and 2? Good job. In Frozen 1, Anna and Elsa were able to save their town and their people. And in Frozen 2, they were able to get all of the answers that they needed about their past. Good job. You guys did a fantastic job. Now it's time to get into our lesson. I hope you guys are ready. Okay. Now what is a figure of speech? A figure of speech is a word or phrase that is used in a non literal sense. That means it's not really what it says. It means something else. Personification is an example of figure of speech. But let's learn a little bit more about personification. Now what is personification? It looks like a big word but I promise you, it is so easy to remember. Let's look at the root word of personification. 
the root word is person. Person. Personification is when a writer makes a non-human object or idea seem like a person. Hmm. Very interesting. What is a non-human object? We will be talking about two types of non-human objects. The first one is animals. Non-human objects can be an animal like a dog, a sea star, a moose, etc., etc. And another type of non-human objects that we will be discussing are inanimate objects. Non-human objects can also be inanimate objects like furniture, cars, teacups, your bed, or even a snowman. Do you want to build a snowman? Do you want to build a snowman? Now, we're going to look at different examples of personified objects in various cartoons. I love cartoons. Did you know that Olaf is considered an inanimate object? He is an inanimate object that has been personified. Remember, personification is when we give inanimate objects and animals human-like traits and qualities. So Olaf is definitely an inanimate object because he is a snowman, a non-living thing. However, he acts like a person, doesn't he? He is personified because he acts like you and I. He walks, he talks, he sings like a real person, and he tells jokes. <laughs> What about SpongeBob? SpongeBob is also an object that has been personified. He's a personified animal. Sponges are animals. They are sea creatures. And SpongeBob, he is a sea sponge. He is not a real person, but he is personified because he acts like a human. He works at the Krusty Krab. He cooks. What does he cook? Yes, Krabby Patties. He walks. He talks like humans do. He even goes to school like you do. So SpongeBob is an example of personification. Have you ever watched commercial? The M&M's commercial? Yes, they are inanimate objects too, which have been personified. Tell me, how have these characters been personified? Take a look. What are they doing that candies don't do? What are they doing that makes them behave like people? Correct. If you said they are personified because they act like humans, you're correct because they're eating popcorn and they're watching a movie on a couch like humans do. But we know that they are candy. They are a type of food. So they're not real people. But they are personified because they behave like people do. Let's look at these Paw Patrol characters. Do you like Paw Patrol? Well, these characters are also objects personified. They are non-human objects. They are animals or puppies. They are personified because they have human qualities. 
sky is always flying a helicopter. Have you ever seen a puppy fly a helicopter? They talk, they wear clothes, and they rescue people. I'm Olaf, and I like warm hugs. Let's look at some examples of objects in text. We just looked at objects in cartoons. Now let's look at them in various texts. We use personification in text. We also use it when we talk and express ourselves. Example number one. Time flies and waits on no man. Hmm. Can time literally fly with wings? Can time literally fly on an airplane the way we do? No. When they say that time flies and waits on no man, it's not meant in a literal sense. It's meant in a figurative sense. Let me explain. Time is an inanimate object, just like Olaf. This suggests that time can fly and is very impatient like humans. However, it figuratively means that time is just moving too fast. So if you ever heard your mom or dad say, time flies and waits on no one, they're saying that time is moving too fast. Example number two. My flowers were begging for water. Can flowers really beg for water, like how you would beg for a piece of candy? No, flowers do not beg for water. This is an example of personification. This is an example of an object being personified. What object is being personified? Correct, the flowers. And how are the flowers being portrayed as human? Yes, they are begging. Flowers don't beg. Humans beg, but flowers don't. So my flowers are the inanimate object. This suggests that my flowers can beg like a person. However, it figuratively means that my flowers need to be watered. That's all that it's saying. Here's another example. Jay heard the last piece of cake calling his name. Mm, mm, mm. What do you think this means? Can a piece of cake literally call your name and say, Jay, Maya, Tisha? No, it can't. This personification is a figure of speech. What object is being personified here? If you said a piece of cake, then you are correct. How is it being personified? Good job. It's calling someone's name. Basically, what this is saying is that the cake looks so delicious and so tempting that I really want a piece of this cake. Are you down for some personification fun? Okay, here we go. Can you identify the personification in this nursery rhyme? Here we go. Hey diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport and the dish ran away with the spoon. Can you identify any personification in this nursery rhyme? Good job. First one. 
A cat is playing an instrument. The cat is playing a fiddle. Do cats play fiddles? No. Do people play fiddles? Yes, we do. So the cat is being personified. Dishes that are running. Have you ever seen your plates and forks and spoons running away? No. So this is another example of personification. People can run. Dishes and spoon cannot. So that's another example of personification. And a laughing dog. Dogs don't laugh, but people laugh. All right, I have another poem for you. This one was written by a kid around your age, and it's titled, My Dinner Loves to Die. My food loves to prance, to jump, to dance. I wait for the time, I wait for the chance. As mommy goes in and out of the room, tables and chairs become their ballroom. I flick my fingers, swing my wrist. Beans and turkey are doing the twist. Peas, plums, apples or mangoes Onto the walls, they're doing the tango. Can you tell me what object is being personified in this poem? Good job. The answer is dun -dun -dun, food. Okay, now. Can you explain the meaning of the personification in the sentence? The sky spat at us as we ran for cover. Can you explain what is meant? Because literally, the sky cannot spit like a person would spit on you. So what are they actually trying to say? Great. The rain began to fall on them. Can you explain this personification? The carpet quickly drank down the water I spilled. Hmm. Can your carpet really take a drink? No. So what are they saying? What does this mean? Good job. It meant that the water was absorbed into the carpet really fast. So good job. All right, guys. I hope you had fun. We have some more activities before we go. Great. Now for our next activity, we are going to read these six sentences. If it uses personification, I want you to write Y-E-S in the air. If it doesn't show personification, I want you to write N-O in the air with your fingers. Let's get started. The computer cheerfully found the files I wanted. Is there an example of personification here? Correct. Yes. Computers aren't cheerful, so the computer is being personified. Number two, the doll curled up under the girl's desk. Good job. There's no example of personification in this sentence. Number three, from outside, the bush tapped on the glass for attention. Good job. Bushes don't call for our attention. 
Number four, the friendly cat told her all about his day. Good job. There is an example of personification in this sentence. Number five, the children played with the blocks. Good job. There was no personification here. And last but not least, her hair refused to behave. Most definitely, her hair is the inanimate object that is being personified. Good job, boys and girls. Now we have another activity next. Okay, now what we're going to do here is we're going to use this inanimate object, which is a car, and we're going to write four verbs that humans do that could be applied to a car. I have an example for you. The car's headlights winked at me. Now you know I don't literally mean they winked at me. Can you come up with any other examples using verbs? Good job. I'm so proud of you. Here are a few other examples. The car drank the gasoline in one gulp. The car's engine coughed its last breath. The old car groaned into third gear. That car smiled at me from across the parking lot. You guys did so well, but we have one more activity left. Your assignment for today. I want you to write a sentence that personifies this object using the keywords provided. This is your picture. You're going to use the keyword yoked and smile. Write a sentence that personifies this object. Boys and girls, you did such an amazing job today and I am so proud of you until next time be good bye